नमस्ते एवरीवन इट्स मी शैलेंद्र झा वेलकम यू टू ऑनलाइन मोनास्टिक क्लासेस टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट फर्स्ट चैप्टर इन सी मैथ दैट इज सेट सेट इज द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इन सी मैथ फॉर क्लास सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन एंड टेन लेट स्टार्ट दिस when we look the history of set theory george cantor george cantor was the originator of set theory that is who has started the set theory but all the work was not done by him it was leonard euler first gave the idea of representing sets by diagram but he hadn't completed the whole work of this he was a swiss mathematician later on british mathematician john han out this into practice so it is known as euler venn diagram idea of representing set by diagram was first given by swiss mathematician leonard euler but he doesn't succeed to complete this work finally later one later on his work was completed by british mathematician john van that's why we say it euler venn diagram or simply venn diagram now let's start the set first definition according to george cantor a set is a collection of definite and distinguishable objects either of perception or of thought conceived as a whole that's the definition given by the george cantor but generally we define this as a set is a well defined collection of objects a set is a well defined collection of objects and the objects which form the set are called the members or elements of the set when we say the well defined look the definition of well defined set a set is said to be well defined set if one can describes what belongs to the set and what does not belongs to the set e that is in the discussion look an example when we say favorite nepali songs nepali songs when we say favorite nepali songs we can't say a fixed song because anyone can say his favorite song is this another have the different one but when i say favorite my favorite nepali song then it is well defined but when i say favorite nepali songs it is not a well defined if i say a smart students of monastic school we can't say exact person there is no way to know which one is the smart which one is not 
that's not the well defined if i say a teacher who teaches loudly it's not a well defined because one teacher teach more loudly than other other have more loudly than other so first thing is well defined collection but it is not well defined then it's not a set for a set it must be a well defined set like if i give a example apple orange grape what you can see there these are the collection of fruit these are the names of fruit so it's a well defined collection so it's a set we have to represent set by a capital letter and the element of set will be represented by a small letter if i write a set of vowel letter it is a e i o u what we have to take care we must have to write we must have to represent the set by capital letter and elements of the set by a small letter in definition we have learned the objects which form the set is called member of the sets the here in this set a there are five members a e i o u we use a notation read as belongs to an element of is a member of we can say a is an element of the set a that is a is a member of a simply we can say a belongs to set a same way you can say e belongs to set a i belongs to set a but if i write b you can see there b is not the element of set a so we have to write b does not belongs to a we will read this as does not belongs to does not belongs to belongs to and does not belong to now move further ways to represent a set there are three ways by which we can represent a set first one is listing method we say roster method or tabulation method you know if you have to go for shopping generally what we do we make a list what the things we have to browse from the market in set we have to write inside the break middle bracket and each element will be separated by comma if i have to bring apple vegetable proper name you can write also false anything else like that so what i have to bring first thing apple then comma vegetable then comma then pulse we can't use the another bracket we must have to use this generally we say that's curly bracket or middle bracket but actual name when we say this bracket which you generally know by the name of a small bracket it is parenthesis parenthesis that is 
precis and that's the crowd caps these are the name of three bracket so we can see when we have to write we have to represent or say it in listing method we have to write inside the braces and each element will be separated by comma then we have the second one that is the description method to write in description method we have to write the common properties of them like we can say name of weeks name of weeks is started by letter s the here the common properties is name of weeks which is started by s you know the seven days of a week name of days of a week you can say name of days of a week started by letter s it came sunday and saturday that's the common properties we have to use last one that is set builder method when we say that last one set builder method almost the same to write as description method but in set builder method we must have to use x such that we can use two signs both we will read as such that and the common properties like x less than or equal to 12 x is an even number here it is even number which is less than or equal to 12 if i have to write this in listing method what are the even number less than 12 to, or equal to 12 2 4 6 8 10 12 when we have to write this same in description method we can write the set of even number even number less than or equal to 12 now we have types of sets these are the smallest things or we can say the beginning of the set but you have to know all these points then you will be able to know the harder things which you have to use in class 9 and 10. in types of set first we have finite set when we say finite that is the set having finite number of elements it means which we can count like if you write one two three four five six here it is countable number of elements which we can count it is the number of a is five cardinal number of the set a is five the such type of set is called finite set which have finite number of elements second word is infinite set when we say infinite, the set having infinite number of elements is called an infinite set. In infinite set, we can't succeed to count this. Like if we write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. How many numbers are? We can't count. So that's an example of infinite finite set move further null set 
or empty set or void set when we say null set that is no element but earlier we have said in the definition of set a set is a well defined collection so when there is no element how can say either it is well defined or not when it is given something then we can say it is well defined or not if it is nothing then how we can know that's not the correct like if we go through the example ladies prime minister of nepal ladies prime minister of nepal do you know how many ladies prime minister of nepal so far we have how many ladies prime minister no one so when we go through the set inside it it will be written no nothing we haven't written here anything that's null set we can represent with this sign also that is phi it represent null set sign name is phi but we will say this null set here in set not the phi only the here number of element is not there but it is well defined so it's also when there is nothing written it is well defined in this way the null set the set having no element is called a null set if we go through another example the set of prime number between 8 and 10 when we go through the set of prime number between 8 and 10 we have one more number that is 9 between them of which is not a prime number so we can write in both way either we have to write nothing inside the braces or phi sign we will represent that's the example of null set another set we have singleton set when we say single it means only one element a set having only one element is called a singleton set like if i say prime number divisible by 2 the set of prime number divisible by 2 only one it will be that is 2 so it's an example of singleton set the set having only one element is called a singleton set pair set the set having only two elements is called a pair set like factor of 3 if i say the set of factor of 3 it will be only 2 that is 1 and 3 since here is only two elements so it's an example of pair set pair set is named another name doubleton set either you say double term or pair both means the same solution set the set consisting of the possible solution of a given problem is called a solution set like as equal x such that x square minus 4 is equal to 0 what will be the solution of this when we solve you know how to solve solving this x square is equal to 4 x is equal to plus minus square root of 4 solution came to it means plus minus 2 as have two values plus and minus the 
this type of set is called solution set the set having consisting of the possible solution of a given problem is called a solution set move further overlapping set now when we have two sets given one of the set is set a have element 2 3 4 5 and set b have element 3 5 7 9 look is there any common element as yes, there are two common elements if two sets have any common element then they are called overlapping sets two sets having at least one common element are called overla overlapping sets then disjoint set 1 3 5 7 2 4 6 when we take these two sets there is no common element between these two there is nothing common so we can say these two are disjoint set if at least one element is common then it is overlapping when it is no when there is no common element then it is disjoint sets then it is subset now the important part is start subset look the example first Here elements of sets are sets A are 1, 3, 5, 7. Elements of B are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. All the elements of set A are also the elements of set B. All the elements of set A are also the element of set B then we can say a is subset of b we will read a is subset of b we can say a contained in b if a and b are two set Two sets such that every element of A is an element of B, then A is called a subset of B. For a subset, all the elements must be the element of the other set. If not, suppose if I add here 11, then now in A and B, all the elements of set A, all are there, but 11 is not in B. So, A is not the subset of B. A is not subset of B. Then, superset. If A is a subset of B, then B is called superset of A. We will read B is superset of A. Superset of A. The definition wise, when A is a subset of B, then set B is called superset of A. Two types of subset are there, proper subset and improper subset. When we go through the proper subset, let's for example, we have now here 
all the elements of set A is also the element of set B. That is, A is subset of B, but A is not equal to B. A is subset of B, but A is not equal to B. When we say equal, it will come later that all the elements must be there. There are more elements than A, so these two are not equal. Then we will say that is A is proper subset of B. If A and B are two sets such that every element of A is an element of B, but B has at least one element, like in example we have two elements 6 and 7 which is not in A, B has at least one element which is not in A, then A is called a proper subset of B. Improper subset 1, 2, 3 that's 3, 2, 1. What we have to remember when we write in listing method that's order is not matter for us. Here 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1 both mean same like if I have to make the group of three students name Ram, Shyam, Hari. Other one have selected the three name Syam, Hari, Ram. What you can see? Order are changed, but the person are same. So the group is made by the same person. In set, when order are changed, it doesn't affect. We have to look the elements, they are same or not. The here are one, two, three. They both are equal. So when they are equal, they are improper shop set. A is improper shop set of B.